Today we are going to demystify that very frustrating SVG attribute, and that is the view box. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're going to be checking out the view box attribute, which is a part of the SVG element. Now, if you've ever created your own SVG graphic and you tried to get it on your site, chances are you've probably at some point have been pulling out your hair, trying to figure out what the view box property exactly does. Now, sometimes you go to, to uh, you probably definitely everybody went to Google and typed in view box tutorial. And a lot of times it's just a bunch of text giving us abstract concepts well the inspiration for today's video came from another article that somebody wrote along with an interactive example that really does a great job at describing exactly what the SVG view box does so we're gonna go over this along with this interactive example and then afterwards I'm gonna show you something I created a little tool where you can actually take your own SVG elements drag them in and use that same sort of tool to create your SVG view box attribute element so that you can just copy and then paste it right back into your own project. All right, so as always, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. Oh, a very quick note about that, by the way. I'm almost at 500,000 subscribers, and just yesterday I finished recording all the footage for my guitar play music reveal retro wave video. I am very exciting. It's been a massive amount of work. So once I hit 500,000 subscribers, I'm going to be releasing that video. All right. Let's get started. Before we begin, this episode is sponsored by Linode. Now, whether you're a seasoned developer or just a beginner, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy pre-built setups like cPanel. cPanel and WHM is a tool that allows you to go from creating individual websites to scaling and managing as many servers as you need. With cPanel and WHM, you can manage your Linode servers through an easy graphical user interface and enjoy free SSL, backups, email, and database management, website builders, and more. So sign up with the link in the description to get a $20 credit on your new Linode account with code DESIGNC19. Okay, so I want you to visit this page it's, uh, in the description here on YouTube. Click on the link and you'll come here. And we're just going to go through this real quickly because this article, after all, is the inspiration for this uh, tutorial. So you want to think of an SVG element as a telescope into another world, in a sense. Uh, it's much like everything is inside of an iframe on another web page. Everything inside of an SVG element is its own world. So the view box attribute is our way to change the settings on our telescope, okay? So the view box should be set to a string containing four numbers separated by spaces. The first two numbers are X and Y set to the position of top and left corner of our view box. And changing these values will pan our view. Or in other words, uh, if you're you're working with the X value or the very first value of those four integers, um, it's going to move things or pan things horizontally. And then if you're changing the second number of the Y value, it's going to pan or move things, your, your SVG graphics essentially in your SVG document, it'll pan them uh, vertically. And then the second uh, or the third and fourth values rather are width and height. And these are set in the number of units that are visible inside of our view box. Now that's a confusing sort of term, like what exactly is a unit, but you'll see in a second. So changing these values will zoom our view, all right? And sometimes it won't, and you'll see that in certain cases. Um, so here is a little interactive demo um, right here that you can use uh, to experiment with this. So right now everything's set at X0 and Y0, and the width and height are 100. And you can see in the demonstration graphic right here, by the way, these uh, little grid rows, these are your units. Um, you can see that it's all set to 0, 0, 0, 100. 100, 0, 100, 100, okay? So um, let's just do the panning, so or the X and Y values. So if we just push this to the right, it's gonna move everything to the left. And notice it's also updating these values right here. This is the actual value of the view box that's updating in the DOM based on the JavaScript applied here. So it just moves it left and right. So when you adjust that very first number here as a part of the view box out attribute in the SVG element, it's going to simply move things left or right in the SVG document. Um, why? Same thing. 
and we can do them both at the same time as well. You can adjust these, very, very simple. So let's just uh, refresh to get that back to zero. Now, remember what I said about zooming. So the width, when I push this right, it's going to make it much smaller because it's increasing the number of units as we've seen here. There's a lot more squares that are visible within the SVG document. Now, if we make them smaller, up to a certain point, it stops zooming and now it's just panning and that has to do with its relationship to the height value as well. So they work off of each other. So now if I bring this, it'll start zooming any, you know, even more. So you have to work with both of these values depending on how much zoom or lack thereof that you want to achieve. So as you can see, you have a lot of control when you adjust these four different elements that are a part of the view box attribute. So this is a great way just to learn, you know, what these four values are doing, but I decided to create uh, my own little tool called the SVG view box generator. All right. And so I've linked that as well in the description. So you can click on that. So here's the generator. Unfortunately, I, I, I knocked this out within an hour or two today. Um, I didn't have enough time. So if you click on it, nothing happens. You have to drag your SVG graphic from your, your file explorer, your desktop on here in order for it to, to work. So I have just two SVGs, one I drew myself, um, and then one from Undraw. Uh, you can check their site out at undraw.com. They have a lot of those just generic illustrations that you can use um, that's really pop popular in UIs right now. So if we just drag this here, here we go. We have um, our little UI that I created here. So um, it's really just the same concept as the previous uh, example from this page, um, except I do allow you to change the background color if you wish, you know, whatever. Um, and then we have our X, Y, width, and height values. Um, so by default, what happens is when uh, we drag on an SVG here, it's going to determine um, the X, Y, width, and height values based on the view box that's embedded into the SVG element. Um, and then we also have a section for copying the output as well. So you can just uh, click on it, Control C to copy it, paste in your document, and you're ready to rock. Um, and it's the same, really, it's the same process. Uh, oh, also, one thing I do do in this is if there's any width and height attributes applied to the SVG element that's contained in the SVG file, um, I remove those just because it by default, it makes it 100% width of the browser or, or in a sense, uh, it makes it responsive just by removing those attributes. Um, so now we can work, work with, you know, positioning this in a certain way. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to have this element as a part of a two column layout or something. Um, we wanted to posi position it some certain way. Well, typically in the past, you might have to experiment manually by hand with those four values and then hitting save up to updating it and then going back look at the browser you know did you do it correctly and then sometimes you're confused because you don't know why things are moving the way they are well now we just adjust these values right here so width all right so we're going to increase this uh, so increasing the width as you recall increases the number of units therefore kind of zooming out um, on our element so then we can push this over, push this down. Now, this is being cut off, but we can adjust that by modifying the height. There we go. And then maybe our X, we could push over here. Now, as you can see, I put the minimum value for these range sliders uh, to a negative thousand, but um, you can obviously go much more um, custom. So in terms of once you actually copy this and get into your code editor. Um, so now you have this uh, great way to very easily, and just obviously for educational purposes as well, using this tool and perhaps that one uh, to really figure out how these SVG uh, you know, view box attribute works. Awesome, awesome stuff. Oh, you know what? Let's try another one. Let me refresh this. This one was like kind of meant to be a full page SVG. You kind of see these uh, Bezier curve sort of uh, UIs a few years ago, they became popular. Um, 
And like I said, by default, uh, if it had a width and height, uh, which is exported, I, I made this in Adobe XD, um, it wouldn't be responsive. So again, the width and height attributes are removed from uh, this, L this, this, this SVG here for as a part of this tool. So the um, X and Y, again, if, let's say if we want, didn't want to see this full thing and we kind of just wanted a simple curve going all the way across, well, we would take our width and make it instead of like 1920, uh, which is what it was, make it like 1200, take our X, position this over here, our Y, maybe move it up. And there we go, something like that. So as you can see, it's very fast and easy once you have this a sort of more intuitive approach with uh, the sliders for adjusting these values. Then you can just take this, copy it, put it into your code editor, and you're ready to rock in most cases. All right, so hopefully now you have a great understanding of the view box. And you know what? If you don't, you could just use that tool and then just copy and paste the values from there after using the range sliders. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys really soon. Goodbye.